let's get to William Tyndale. Okay. This was a man who ended up, you taught me, I, I was just watching a presentation you did. He mm -hmm. was strangled to death by a chain mm -hmm. because they didn't want these guys preaching to yeah. the crowds because people were getting saved. Right. They lit him on fire. Yeah. But you said. Yeah, it's true. They also. Well, they put a bag of gunpowder around his neck and so that, and you would burn from the bottom to the top. So it's first your feet, then your legs, and then it works its way up because they lit the fire around your feet. So the last thing to be burned would be your head. Although normally you would collapse down into the fire, but then the bag of gunpowder would just blow you into so many pieces, there's nothing left to bury. And that was not uh, unique to William Tyndale. They did it to many of the Marian martyrs also. I think it would be worth noting, the first Marian martyr was a man named John Rogers, 1555. And he is an example of what they would do. With preachers, they would burn you at the stake in front of your church. And they would march you to the execution site by marching you through your parish and marching you through the streets of the neighborhood of which you were the shepherd and the pastor, and you have preached the word of God to these people. So it, it was like the Via Della Rosa, uh, Christ carrying his, his bar of the cross to Golgotha. It was intended to inflict shame and emotional trauma and mockery, and also to intimidate those who were in your congregation who sat under your preaching, this is what we think of your preacher, and this is what we think of what you believe, and this is what we think of you as well. And so they would set the stake in front of the church in a very public setting in which the whole town would show out, not, just, not, not only the congregation, but the entire town. And as you would go to the stake, like John Rogers and others, they go quoting scripture, quote, quoting Psalm 51, and your church would cheer for you and urge you on and exhort you to remain true to the faith, while the rest of the people who were Catholic are jeering you and taunting you and, and mocking you. And in the case of John Rogers, we believe that Bloody Mary was on the second floor watching and observing um, all of this in Smithfield in London. So it was a very painful way to die. It was a very humiliating way to die. But when John Rogers went to the stake, the ambassador to France wrote, it looked as though he was going to his wedding day. He was going triumphantly. He knew why he was dying. And it was a gospel issue. And he had been offered a pardon that morning that if he would recant his view on the Lord's Supper and the gospel itself, then a pardon would be given to him and he said, what I have preached, I will seal with my own blood. And so he goes triumphantly. He had a wife and 10 children. The youngest child he had never seen. She was born while he was in prison. He was in Newgate Prison there in Smithfield. And his children try to break through the crowd um, to come to him. And he just is relentless. So these men um, are heroes of the faith. And when you read the book of Revelation, there's one group in particular that is singled out in heaven as being close to the throne, and it's the martyrs.